We're going to use this graph uh, to answer the following questions. This is our graph of y equals f of x. We notice about this is there's an open circle on one end and there's a closed circle on the other end. So the first question asks us to find f of negative 1. So what this is asking us to do, it says find the y value when x is negative 1. So on this graph, we're going to first start by going over to negative 1. So that's going to be right here. And then we're going to go up until it hits the graph. So what we notice about that is that negative 1, it's hitting the graph right here. And so that y value at that point, that's going to be 2. So we're going to say that at the x value of negative 1, the y value on the graph happens to be 2. So that's going to be our answer. Next, it says find x such that f of x is equal to 4, and we're also going to do f of x equals 0. So for this, uh, it's, at, it's saying that what x value is going to give us a y value of 4. It's at, kind of asking the reverse question of the last one. So now it's asking, well, what x will make this correct? Because remember, y equals f of x. So if I have a number after the equal sign, that's actually the y value. So it's actually giving me a y value to start with. I want to find the corresponding x value. So in this case, I look at the graph and I notice that the, the y value is up here at 4. I want to indicate what x value is that occurring at. Well, at this point, I can just take this graph and I can go down to here. And so at the x value of 1, that's where the y value is equal to 4. So I would say here, x is equal to 1. Then I wanted to find out what x value gives me a y value of 0. That's asking us to find the x-intercepts. So if I look at this, every place where the y value is 0, that actually occurs at these spots right there. So I'm just going to indicate all the different numbers. Okay, negative 2 is where it'll cross the x-axis at 3 and 5. So negative 2, 3, and 5, I'm just going to separate those with commas. And these three x values will give me a y value of 0. Next is f of negative 3 halves positive or negative? Okay, well negative th uh, 3 halves is the same thing as negative 1.5. So what you're going to do is we're going to look over here at negative 1.5, so the x value would be somewhere about right here, and I'm going to follow that up, and then it's going to hit the graph somewhere here. Now that's going to be uh, in, a, in the uh, positive y's because all the positive y's are above the x-axis. So in this case, your answer is going to be positive. We don't want to know the exact number. We're just concerned about is that going to be positive or negative. And so because it crosses here, that's above uh, the x-axis. And so uh, that gives us our answer of positive. Now I want to do domain and range. Domain is talking about the x values that the graph is using. Over here, the, the, the farthest to the left value that's there is going to be at negative 3. So in that case your domain is going to start at negative 3. However, we're not going to use a bracket because this is an open circle. So we actually want to do a parenthesis on that one. Again, because of the open circle, it's not we're not including negative 3, but it does go all the way up to uh, negative 3. It's going to go all the way over this way to 6. Now 6 is going to have to have a bracket because there's a closed in circle over there. So your answer is going to go between negative 3 and positive 6 and we have an open or parenthesis on the negative 3 and we have a closed bracket on the 6. For range we're talking about the y values the graph uses. Now this one's also going to be a parenthesis because we have an open circle that goes from negative 4 all the way up to positive 4. And positive 4 is going to have a bracket. Now, even though we don't have a closed circle up there, that point's still going to be included because it's on the graph. We have a solid line, which means that there is a graph, uh, there is a number at that point. So that's why, since there's no open circle, that's why we're going to put a bracket on that one. Next one, identify the intercepts. The intercepts is where it crosses either the x-axis or the y-axis. Okay, so first we have x-intercepts. Now, x-intercepts, we actually did that already. We did it up here in part B when it asks for f of x equals 0. It's going to be the same answers, negative 2, 3, and 5. It's actually just asking the same thing two different ways. If the y value is 0, that is the definition for x-intercept. So it's going to be negative 2, 
3, and 5. Those are your x-intercepts. The y-intercept is going to be where it crosses the y-axis. It's going to cross there at 3. There's only one place where it crosses the, the vertical y-axis. It's going to be that one. The last one asks, does this have any kind of symmetry? So remember there's x-axis, y-axis, and origin symmetry. For x-axis, we would have to see if, we, if I fold the graph over the x-axis, it's going to lay on top of itself. Well, no, there's, we can't do that because the graph will not lay on top of itself there when we fold it over. If we fold it over the y-axis, I'll be checking for y-axis symmetry. That doesn't line up either. I don't have the same thing in opposite quadrants. So it doesn't have any kind of symmetry. So does it have symmetry? No, it doesn't have any kind of symmetry. No x-axis, no y-axis, or no origin symmetry.